The idea that evolution has been scientifically proven is often promoted in schools and universities, in popular TV shows, and in books. But have scientists really proven that we all evolved from a primitive life form into all the life forms that we see today? And what about the origin of life? Have scientists proven how life could have arisen from non-living things? What I want to show you in this video is what scientists who are experts in these fields have to say about the origin of life and evolution. And what I'll show you is that while the vast majority of scientists believe in evolution, they still don't have a clue how it could have happened. And they certainly can't scientifically demonstrate how it happened. So let's start with the origin of life. Before life can evolve or develop, it needed a beginning. Could life have arisen spontaneously? Let's look at what the scientists who've done the latest research on this topic have to say. From Matter to Life is a book with contributions from 35 scientists who are working in this field. And although they're work trying very hard to show how life could have originated from non-living substances, they admit that this is a huge problem. Look at what Dr. Sarah Amari Walker and Dr. Paul Davies have to say about it. The emergence of life and mind from non-living chemical systems remains one of the great outstanding problems of science. Guys, this was published in 2017. These are scientists who specialize in the origin of life and they still don't have it figured out. In fact, they admit that many of their ideas about how life could have developed would require defying the known laws of physics. Look at what they say. If we envision the route from mundane chemistry to life and onward to mind as a trajectory in some enormous state space, then not every trajectory is consistent with the known laws of physics. In fact, it may well be that almost all trajectories are inconsistent with the known laws of physics. So what they're saying is when they're trying to think about how life could have developed, most of the ideas they come up with would require defying the known laws of physics. They still have not figured out how life could have originated. Okay, well, we don't have the origin of life figured out, but haven't scientists figured out how life evolved once the process got started? No, they haven't. Some people are screaming natural selection at the screen right now. Natural selection is great for selecting the best features of an organism for a particular environment. Natural selection uses what is already present in the gene pool. It does not have the power to create new features in an organism. Here's what evolutionary biologist Dr. Mastoshi Ne has to say about it. He says, some evolutionists will still cling to, some evolutionists still cling to panselectionism and state that natural selection is the only process by which species adapt to their environment. In the genomic era, this interpretation is clearly incorrect because without mutation, no adaptation can occur. What Dr. Ney is saying is that Natural selection was a fine proposal for Darwin's era, but now that we know about genes and DNA, we know that a more fundamental change has to occur. Natural selection isn't enough to get new organisms to develop. In order to get new organs and new systems, it requires that new information be added to the DNA. And the way that scientists believe that that happened is through genetic mutations. Natural selection isn't enough because you first have to have something to select from. And Dr. Ney emphasizes that point saying, in the mutationless world, evolution cannot occur because no new variation is generated. 
Dr. Ney is saying that mutation is absolutely vital for evolution to occur. Without mutation, you can't have anything to select from. So, okay, well, have mutations then shown to be an effective way to get evolutionary development? No, they haven't. In fact, Dr. Ney's book is filled with the history of abandoned theories about the way that mutations could have brought about such large changes in organisms. The truth is we still have very little understanding about how this process could have occurred. Look at what Dr. Ney admits. Evolution of these genetic systems is obviously very complicated and our understanding of the evolutionary mechanism is very poor. At the present time, what we can do is to study the evolution of each component multi-gene family and speculate the possible course of evolution of interaction between different gene families. Dr. Ney has been researching in this field for over 50 years. He's an expert and he's saying that our understanding of the evolutionary mechanism is very poor. Bottom line is, Dr. Ney believes in evolution. He believes that it happened and he believes that the way that it happened is through mutation, but he doesn't know how it happened. And neither do any of the other numerous evolutionary biologists who have been working in this field for the last century. This is a book called Biochemical Evolution by Dr. Athel Cornish Bowden. Now, Dr. Bowden promotes the theory of evolution as incontrovertible scientific fact, but there are many times in his book when Dr. Bowden makes honest admissions about the problems in the current models of evolution. And about mutation, Dr. Bowden says this, we need to look elsewhere for an explanation of where new functions come from that allow one species to be different from another. All of the error correcting machinery works in the direction of forbidding any changes at all, and hence any evolution at all. Such changes as occur are the result of mistakes. Moreover, if Kimura is right, then most point mutations will either be lethal, so the individual will not survive, or they will be neutral, so they will have no gross effect. Yet evolution does produce gross effects. So what Dr. Bowden is saying here is that mutations have not been shown to be able to make large changes within an organism. We have error correcting machinery that works against mutations being able to do that, and that the research shows that most mutations are either lethal or neutral. But even if such mutations did occur, could the organism survive? Look at what Dr. Bowden says on that topic. He says, even a simple organism has a low probability of being able to tolerate a minimal change in the genetic code. And for a complex organism, the chance would be much smaller. Dr. Co Dr. Cornish Bowden specializes in metabolic processes. So regarding his own area of specialty, what does he say about the evolutionary process? He says, animals in general show almost no capacity to evolve new metabolic pathways. They can lose the ones their ancestors had as the primates and some other animals have lost the capacity to synthesize vitamin C, so it needs to be present in the diet, but they cannot invent new ones. So in Dr. Bowden's area of specialty, he has not been able to find the capacity for animals to develop new metabolic pathways. In fact, he says they can lose them, but they can't invent new ones. It's easy to find examples of mutations that cause a loss of function 
to an organism, but not any examples of how mutations could have developed a new organ or a new system within an organism. Dr. Cornish Bowden also chimes in on the topic of the origin of life as it relates to his field. He discusses the terribly improbable odds of even a single protein developing naturally. And I'll spare you the long calculations, probability calculations, but based on the probability calculations, he says, not only can we apparently prove that life could not have originated on Earth, we can prove almost as easily that it could not have originated anywhere. Yet, this conclusion must be wrong. We are here to discuss it, and we know that life does exist on Earth. So any proof otherwise must be flawed. It seems to me that there are only two possible ways out of the difficulty. Either a divine intelligence planted life on Earth and possibly elsewhere in a deliberate act, or the prob probability calculations outlined above are incorrect. So Dr. Bowden sees only two options for this difficult problem of even a protein developing naturally. He says the probability is just insurmountable. So either our probability calculations are incorrect or a divine intelligence planted us here. Well, Dr. Bowden thinks that it must be that our probability calculations are incorrect, even though he offers no solution to them. Well, Dr. Bowden, I think the calculations are correct. And I think that the other option you suggested is much better and fits with the evidence. I think there's very good evidence that we were placed here by a divine intelligence. The theory of evolution is far from being proven. In fact, evolution has some major and probably insurmountable scientific problems. If you disagree with me, I would be happy to investigate any resource or scientific book that you want to supply me, but please don't send me any clips from Richard Dawkins or Neil deGrasse Tyson or Matt Dillahunty. Those guys are great at spinning evolutionary tales and spreading propaganda, but their stories are not based on scientific research. So thanks for watching. And as time permits, I will investigate any resource that you send me. And um, I would love to hear your thoughts and feedback on this video. Thanks so much.